right now we are going to cover the Flux architecture as an alternative to custom global events, as a way of having different components at different points in the component tree to be able to interact in a decoupled way. So let's have a look at what the Flux architecture looks like. These are the four elements of the Flux architecture. Actions, a central dispatcher, originally we had multiple stores, now the most common variation of Flux we only have one store, and the view. So let's go back here to this representation of our application. Let's say that we write here a new message. That would trigger the creation of a new action. We would call it write new message action. That action, which is simply a plain JavaScript object, is going to be dispatched to a central service known as the dispatcher. The dispatcher would then notify the multiple stores of the application. And what is a store? The store is like a container, like a vault of state, where we store inside the state of our application. For example, this application could have a few stores in it. The Fred store, the messages store, maybe here for the unread messages counter we would have an unread messages store. So the store is a container of state of our application. So in memory state on the client side. The domain model of our application would be found inside the store. Typically the store does not contain derived data, it contains the actual business data. We're going to learn more about this distinction further in the course. So the store will receive the action and will transform the state that it contains inside the store. It will then generate a new version of that state. The view will then be informed that a store to which the view has subscribed to has a new version of the state. So the view will take the state from the store via a callback method and it's going to render that state to the screen. So typically the view will take the state from the store and it will further transform it because each view, each component will have a different representation for that state. So this component here would take the state out of the messages store and it would loop through it and count the messages that have not been read by the current user. And it would project that to the view under the form of a single counter. But this other part of the application would receive that same application state and it would produce a different representation of that state. In this case, it would produce a list of messages of the currently selected thread. So we can see that the Flux architecture allows that our application has several components at different parts of the component tree, so completely unrelated parts of the component tree, to communicate among themselves in a completely decoupled way by using a centralized service that in the original Flux architecture was known as the dispatcher, in the variation that we are going to cover in this course, that is a Angular version, an RxJS version of Redux, the NGRX store, we are going to see that the dispatcher and the stores, the multiple stores of the application, have been collapsed into a single central service, a single store. So we will see that in NGRX store, the notion of dispatcher and stores have been collapsed together. So let's go back to our original problem that we were trying to solve, the Facebook counter problem. It's just an example. How does the Flux architecture help us in any way to better solve this problem? How does this setup help us to deal with the Facebook counter problem? How is this better compared to custom global events and event bus solutions like we have presented before? In which way is this better? The solution is simple. We are still in our application whenever we do a modification of the state of the application. We are still sort of issuing a command to a central service. It's roughly equivalent to emitting a global event actually because the centralized service is global and visible in multiple parts of the application. And the action itself is very similar to an event. It just contains some data, some payload that gets sent to a global service. 
The difference here is the other parts of the application that need to react to that action, they will not be notified of the action directly. So there is a level of indirection and the action will be processed and it will be resulting in a new state. So the multiple parts of the application that need to display that state will simply receive a new version of that state. But for example, the counter here does not know what caused the emission of that new application state. It simply knows that a new state version has arrived and that it needs to be displayed in a certain way. In this case, counting the number of unread messages. The same goes here to the list of messages. So these different parts of the application that project multiple representations of the application state, they do not know what caused the creation of that new state. And this prevents situations like having logic that corresponds to the counter here accidentally being uh, added at the level of the write new message component. The presence of the store creates a level of indirection and the view subscribes to the store. In that sense, this notion is very similar to an observable, as we will see. So the store can be seen as an observable of application state because it emits new versions of the application state. We can also dispatch actions directly against the store, as we will see. So to summarize, the key thing to retain about the Flux architecture is that we can have components interacting at multiple levels of the component tree and related places of the component tree without introducing tight coupling between those same components. That is achieved by introducing a level of indirection. So each part of the application that wants to do some modification of the application state simply sends an action to the store. The store will calculate the new application state and it will report it back to any views that have subscribed to it. So in the case of our chat application, each view will receive the complete state and it will know how to display that state on the screen. So the counter receives the complete state, meaning the complete list of threads and messages, and it will know how to reduce that to a single counter. The list of messages will also receive the same data and it will know what is the current thread, what are their messages and how to display them on the screen. So, to summarize and to conclude this lesson, the Flux architecture allows us to implement decoupled communication between components at different levels of the component tree. This comes at the expense of introducing an extra level of indirection between the action creator and the store subscriber. But it makes it very simple to implement certain use cases like, for example, the Facebook counter problem. It's very important to realize that there is a trade-off at stake here that might make sense in some situations and not others. And this is always the case with architecture, there is always a trade-off involved. So I hope that this gives you a good overview of Flux. Let's cover one last thing, unidirectional data flow. And after that, we are going to start building our chat application. And if by any reason, some of these initial sections were not 100% clear the first time that you heard them. If everything about Flux is very new to you, I suggest let's just start building that chat application and once that's done, you can always come back to these initial sections and watch them again and everything will make a lot more sense. And don't forget to leave me questions in the comments. Great, so without further ado, Let's get going with unidirectional data flow.